today with Marilyn and Sarah. I have a super encouraging testimony for you from Edith. She called our prayer center to ask for prayer for her husband who had been suffering from, um, they're called TIAs, they're mini strokes. And after receiving prayer, her husband was healed and didn't have any more TIAs, mini strokes. I just encourage you that God answers prayer. And whatever the need is in your life, God wants to answer that need and solve that problem. So hop on the phone, get on the website and be like Edith. Edith said, hey, I got nothing to lose, let's pray. And that's what God loves. God loves that abandoned faith that says, yep, I know that you can solve anything and nothing is impossible. Remember this, remember this, that nothing, Luke 1 nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible. So I encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. And mom, so happy today. We have oh. Deborah Pagay with us. Yes, Yay! yes, yes. I love it, love it, love it. Good to Super see you glad guys. you're here. Love you. Love you. Love Super you. glad. And love this book, Taming 30 Days to Taming Worry and Anxiety. And it's not a boy, person on the planet, talk about that. right? <laughs> not a person on the planet who doesn't struggle with worry you and bet. anxiety. You Why bet. do you feel particularly empowered to talk about it? What's going on? Well, well, well. After I wrote the book, I had the most anxiety-producing situation ever oh, in my life. Dear. And just recently, I, I am still in the throes of just coming out of it, being fully delivered, claiming most of my deliverance. But a few days, um, a few months ago, uh, we at 7.30 in the morning, our neighbor called us and said, I saw a man jump your fence. And I, I was at your gardener. I'm thinking, well, this is the day the gardener comes, but no, it's too early. He didn't come this early. Anyway, to make a long story short, we start running from window to window. A man had already made his way to the balcony of our uh, exercise room and was about to break the window to come in. No way. I mean, my husband literally had to get a gun and chase him away. Holy cow. Oh. Oh, you, I can't Ugh. begin to tell you what kind of anxiety that, that caused for me. And I kept thinking he's going to come back. And I, I did what I know to do. I ran to the scriptures. I actually just started praying and I told everybody to pray for me. I ended up, to make this long story short, <laughs> I, I got a visual. The Lord said, get a visual and a verse. So what I did, I took a picture of our house and I, I went on the internet and got pictures of warring angels and pasted it all around this picture and made a complete picture that showed angels surrounding my house. He shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. But it was just the most anxiety producing thing ever. But I know that that's the work of the enemy. And I said, God, only you can deliver me. Right. Because that sometimes you and I and I felt bad that I was in that space and I felt like I'm a woman of faith. People are going to say, "Are you afraid of that?" I'm going, "Yes, I am. I'm not going to let the enemy shut me up." I called everybody right. who could pray and said, "Listen, sure. pray for me, <laughs> pray sure. for me." And so it's been that kind of thing. But the stress part of it, the stress part of it, and so we did our part. We got we you know secured the house better, got cameras, but I didn't want my faith to be in that. And uh, so, so that's where we are now. You know, we've secured everything, but my faith is in knowing that if God doesn't watch the house, <laughs> the, all those other things are right, in vain. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, it was pretty hard. Oh, it was my goodness. Pretty, oh, gosh, it was. it was. Right, and and the truth of it is all of us have worries and anxieties. Ab absolutely. And our lives tend to kind of ebb and flow with them, right? Yes. And it, sometimes we get in a season and space where it feels like everything's relatively calm. Yes. And then sometimes we hit this where it seems like everything, all hell breaks loose, right? Absolutely. Um, so how can we work our way through that? And this book, of course, super helpful. And I like that it's 30 days. Yes. Right? So you can read one a day. One and a they're day. not long. Thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> who's got time for long? I know everybody's busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's short, yeah. concise, and super practical. But how do we kind of prepare ourselves for some of that ebb and flow? Well, first of all, we get a mindset because stress is uh, inevitable. So we can't ever think, I'm going to get rid of all the stressors and that's going to be it and now my life is going to be peaceful. Not, you know, stress is just the pressure of everyday living. And so we have to learn how to deal with it. And I always say, identify the things that are stressing you the most. What are your key stressors? Because sometimes you say, well, isn't that obvious? Not so. It could be something else that's really stressing you and you're trying to pretend that that's not it. It can even be a spouse. <laughs> It you know, could be. It could yeah, be. Yeah, or and, your children. Right. And you say, okay, this is what it is now. How do I address this? Because you need to be able to communicate to someone that their behavior is negatively impacting you and, and then to work out a plan for it. You don't have to be hostile, but we can, but we're, stress is inevitable. We're going to encounter stress. So the first thing I say to do is identify the stressors and think about what kind of a plan, how can I approach this? How can I communicate it? You don't want to wait too long to communicate it because it's like that old simmer and blow theory. <laughs> You simmer on it and then you don't, you know, confront it and then you're just going to blow right, up one still day. still there. Yeah. So then, you, so once you do that, then you, you take those things to God. He is the God of peace. 
There's nothing more powerful than the Word of God to get us out of a stressful situation. So there are certain stressful situations that I've just decided this is how I'm going to deal with them. One of them is the traffic in L.A. You know, we're known for oh, our traffic. Oh, wow. It's horrible. And people drive really badly. But I always, I've already decided when people cut in front of me or whatever, I'm going to say, that's a prayer request. <laughs> really, I'm going to go into intercession for that person. I'm, you know, I'm saying, Lord, save this person. Help him, you know, bless him, whatever. But I am just not going to let it destroy my peace. I believe the enemy is after our peace. He is. Because we need to be known for that. As Christians, we need to be known for a person who is unshakable. Now, right. we, and we don't have to pretend we're unshakable. We can just let the peace of God rule in our hearts. I love that. Let the peace. Let not your heart be troubled. That means right. don't allow it. Don't, don't allow right. it. That's what right. we got to do. Totally good. And you know, you might be watching today and you feel stressed out. You feel anxious. You have a lot of worry. Um, I'd encourage you to hop on the phone, get on the website. We, of course, would love to pray for you and, and grab a couple copies. And here's the thing. You may be going through one of those seasons where it doesn't feel stressful, um, but you know friends who are in a stressful time. Grab a couple copies. These are always great resources, huge resources yes. that you can pass on to somebody and say, hey, it feels like you're kind of in a stressful season, but I'd love for, to give this to you because I think it would help you a boatload and it's an easy thing to grab. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. But you know, Deborah, some people, they, they seem, I've met people that feel like nothing holds them together except worry. Have you met people <laughs> like that? Yeah. yeah, it's like riding a stationary bike. You know, yeah. it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and, and, but it's like they only, yeah. they worry about everything. I have a friend, her mother worries about everything. I mean, wow. little, big, me medium, pick something. Worries about what isn't, worries about what is, worries about the future, worries about the past, worries about... And, and if you took the worry away, it almost is like an identity for them. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, it's, it, keep in mind, when we worry, we're worrying about the future, so we're not living in the present. Listen, you don't need to always say, don't borrow sorrow from tomorrow. Right. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You know, we're not, we're not built to live in two time periods. Right. We're going to have to just stay in the present. And then we have to start about looking, looking at our base. What's, what's our foundation? What foundation do, do we operate from? I always say, secure your foundation. That's what I say in the book. Step two, after you identify your stressors, I say, secure your foundation. What does that mean? Life is like a stool. There's a base and four legs. So the base has to be the beliefs, and they flow down to the four anchors of your life, the spiritual, the, the physical, the relational, the emotional, and the financial. So you got to say, listen, what am I believing when I worry? What am I believing about God? What is that telling me? I'm saying he's not sufficient for this. I have to really get tr real about what I'm believing about God when I worry, because I really must learn to cast, cast all my cares before him. What does that cast mean? Toss quickly. That means don't carry it. Toss it quickly. When it comes up, you say, God, here it is. And then train your mind not to dwell on it. What are you going to dwell on instead? You can't think about nothing. <laughs> you got to think about the Word of God. That's why I'm really big, and I know you are, on memorizing Scripture so that I replace it with that thought of worry. I cast down that imagination. I cast down, as, as it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations, everything that's exalted itself against what I know about God. Mm -hmm. Yes. That scripture you quoted in 1 Peter 5, 7. Yes. The next verse is very important. For the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes. If you will cast your stress mm -hmm. and your anxiety on him, the devil can't chew on your gut. And that's where he chews on you. Yes. And so, well, it isn't there, devil. God that's has right. it. Go chew on him, but don't chew on me. <laughs> First Peter it. 5, but 7, please. and 8. And you give these wonderful keys in here. And I would encourage you, I would get 10 or 20 of these. Really? You say, are you serious? Yes, I am very serious. Because, you know, a lot of times when I go to have my hair done, people are sitting next to me and I'll pull out a book and they'll say, well, what are you reading? Well, I'm looking at 30 days to tame worry and anxiety. Everybody, this fits everybody. And so you can pass it on. Say, would you like this? I'd really like to give it to you. And we have so much opportunity to get people into faith, to get them into Jesus and yes. books. This is small. If it were bigger, they would probably, oh, that's just too much. <laughs> and people don't like to read. But this is so tiny and so compact. You just must get a number of them 
and you will use it. You can use it in a daily way. They will use it and Jesus will be glorified. So call us, call us right away. And you have some worries and anxieties you just like to have prayer for. So, you know, leave your prayer requests because we'd really like to get your prayer requests too and pray over those specific things. Now, when you say worry and anxiety, yes. what's the difference? Well, um, worry is, it affects the mind. I say anxiety uh, affects the body. Uh, worry, worry is about the future and anxiety is really anticipating a negative outcome. Oh, you see, when I'm anxious about something, that's why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Don't anticipate a negative outcome. See, we have such an advantage as Christians because we don't have to get stuck in sense realm living, living below the senses. I always say, uh, I, I, I draw a line in my mind and, and, and in my mind, everything below the line is what I can see, hear, feel, touch. It's in the sense realm, but we walk by faith. As Christians, we don't walk by sight. So we have to stop sometimes and catch ourselves and say, wait a minute, this is just sense realm thinking. I need to think by faith. Mm -hmm. I don't need to bring God down to the level of what I can see and feel and touch. I need to say, nevertheless, this is what God is able to do. I know we sound like a broken record in saying that here, but I hope you really get it. That nothing is too hard for God. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now, when we do that, now we don't have to be anxious about it because here's the good news. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, you know, let your request be made known unto God. I was meditating that one day and he says, what do you see after that, that, that phrase? And I said, nothing, a period. He says, say the period. Oh, sweet. Let your request be made known unto God, sweet. period. Feed your faith, <laughs> not your fear. Feed your faith, not your stress. Feed your faith, not your worry. Now stay right there. Deborah will be right back. And this is so powerful for you this very day. You've just got to have this truth. Do you long for peace of mind? Do you struggle with worry and anxiety? Unfortunately, anxiety provoking circumstances are a natural consequence of life, but there are effective ways to deal with the stress they cause. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Deborah Piguet's book, 30 Days to Taming Worry and Anxiety. You'll discover how to experience joy by embracing a divine perspective, achieve clarity by improving your sleep, diet, and exercise routines, trade your stress speak for more calming expressions, and much more. Packed with practical insights and biblical inspiration, this book helps you respond effectively to worry and anxiety so you can be a happier person. We'll also send you Marilyn's Winning Over Worry CD. In this life-changing teaching, Marilyn tackles this very common topic. You'll find encouragement that God doesn't want you just getting by. He wants you free and winning over the worry in your life. Take the first step in winning your battle over worry. Call or click for this valuable resource. that one truth could change your life forever? Just one revelation could totally transform your life. I believe as you watch this time with Deborah and Sarah and me, that there is going to be truth that hits you where you live. I think this is a very important day. Psalm 119, 118, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice and be glad. You're about to get some revelation that is extremely important for you. This is 30 days to taming worry and anxiety. Now, don't tell me you never worry, you never have any anxiety, or I'll pray for you for lying. 
because we all can get into it. And this is so special. God has put this on Deborah's heart. It's a revelation. I'm telling you that you can use 30 days, yes, but the next 30 days you could use it some more and you can pass it on. Deborah, you are really a blessing to give just concise truths that just hit you where you live. And I never thought I could write a book because I said, I'm so bottom line, the book will be this big. <laughs> Sure. But you know what? God has used the brevity to uh, really minister to people because everybody's busy, but nobody's too busy to read a book like no. this. And, and I'm, I'm just grateful for that because I, I like how you emphasize the truth. The truth will make you free, right. free from worry and anxiety. I like the scripture that says in Psalms 85, 10, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Oh, there's, a, there's an intimate connection between doing right and having the peace of God. And peace is such a precious commodity. I mean, I think the enemy is always out to destroy our peace and I hold on to it. I said, I'm going to hold on to my peace at all costs because doing the right thing will cause you. That's one of the big things that can decrease your stress. Just do the right thing. Then you have the, the, the comfort of knowing. Exactly. That God's on your side because you've Even done the right thing. Even if it doesn't make you popular. That's right. You've done the right thing. You've done the right thing. And, you, and so that brings a certain amount of peace knowing that. In here you talk about uh, stress speak. Yes. Right? <laughs> and, and it's good to do the right thing, but sometimes we get ourselves screwed into the roof because of our conversation, what we yes. say. What yes. is stress speak? Well, we're snared by our words. And stress speak is when you use words that imply stress. For instance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to the cleaners. I'm going to jump in the shower. I'm going to rush up down here. I'm going to zip over here. <laughs> I'm going to grab a bite to eat. You see how you're programming yourself for stress? You have to watch your words. You don't have to watch my words because we're in the process of moving in. And so uh, our escrow is closing in and, and it's going to be just enough to pay cash for the next house, which is a good thing. But I wanted to do some other things. And I, and I was saying, now I'm not going to have enough money to do the fix up that I really, really wanted to do. I'm like, why am I limiting God to what's on that settlement sheet? <laughs> You see how we can stress ourselves oh, yeah. out? How am I going to get that little water thing I wanted in the backyard? I'm, have it, I'm not going to have the money because on paper, there's no excess money left. And my husband said, why do you keep saying that? You know, and I'm thinking, yeah, I know better. So we have to be mindful of ourselves because it's, the, it's that kind of stressful talking. You'll talk yourself right out of the peace of God, right out of faith, and you'll talk yourself into being stressed. I think another thing that causes us to stress sometimes, and I don't think we're honest about it, is a control. Oh, yeah things that we, that are out of our control. Yes. And yes. so that stresses us out. And particularly as women, and if we have children, all the more, we want to, you know, have everything in control and everything oh, settled. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's a, a real problem for us when it comes to stress and anxiety and worry and being out of control. So help us on that. Well, uh, I, I have to admit I like being in control of things. Sure. <laughs> but I don't, I'm not a control freak because, first of all, we have to understand we can't control people anyway. We can only manage ourselves. We can't control what people do. We can't sure. control outcomes. And that's why a lot of people don't delegate. But then you won't be effective, you know. Exactly. I mean, you have to trust other people. They may not do it the way you do it, you know. And I got into this whole sense of false responsibility by being controlling. When my mom was alive, I felt it was my job to try to have the Mother's Day celebration. And I had let's say siblings who everybody didn't participate and it just infuriated me because I always felt like it, you know I have to make sure that everybody participates and my husband said why don't we just start treating your mom just the two of us we'll just take her to dinner or whatever and why don't you stop trying to make everybody be like leave it to beaver family <laughs> and be perfect <laughs> sure. you know and I thought Whew, that, that relieved a lot of stress <laughs> You know, right. I don't have to plan. I don't have to make sure everybody has a birthday celebration. Why am I taking on this responsibility? It's that sense of false responsibility that would keep us stressed as well. Right. And it's an interesting verse in Proverbs 16, verse 9. It says, the mind of man plans his way, ah. but the Lord directs his steps. Yes. And I think so many times, and it's good to plan. It I'm is. not saying don't plan. Planning is good. Absolutely. But we have to understand that within those plans, God directs our steps. He does. And the steps sometimes, and I found that sometimes my plans are not always God's ways. Right. 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 Yeah. And so the idea, and one of the things you bring up in here is flexibility. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have a scripture, <laughs> I have a scripture for it too. Oh, right? I have a scripture it's for it. And good. while you're looking up the scripture, I just encourage you, hop on the phone, <laughs> get on the website, because you're watching and... Of course, you have various stress, anxiety, worries in your life. You know people. All of us, we all deal with this 
where, I don't care where you're at in your life. You might be retired. You might be just 15. Well, I don't care how old you are. I don't care if you're female, male. I don't give a rip about any of that. All of us have this issue. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And what's great about this book is it's, it's 30 days. So basically, it's a few pages per day. And it'll help you. And it will help you take captive those thoughts that exalt themselves above the knowledge of Jesus. So you're not, you're not controlled by that stress, anxiety, and worry. Yes. So help us on flexibility. Well, and it says in James 3, 17, that the wisdom that comes from heaven is a peace loving and, and is gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. Oh, <laughs> oh I, why is that scripture in the Bible? That that? That's so hard. <laughs> well, because those of us who are planners and, and who get things done, we, we know how we want it. It's like, don't bother it. I, I know how I want it. <laughs> but we have to always stay at that nevertheless point the way Jesus did in the garden. Not Father, let this will. cup pass, yeah, pass. not my will, but yours. Nevertheless, not my will. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do that with our plans. Hold them up to God. Say, God, here's my plan. I know there are many plans in a man's heart, but it's your purpose that prevails. Please let your purpose prevail in this. Exactly. I love this because I get really, Sarah would say, my undies in a bunch <laughs> when I'm on a flight and then it's late, you know. And, you know, we can't get on, well, there's some mechanical thing, you know. I don't have long nails, so I can't bite them, but I can really get those kind of things. And so being flexible and saying, okay, God, you can make this work for good. So I'm going to take this time. I'm going to speak the scriptures. I'm going to take this time to pray. Is there someone you want me to talk to about Jesus? And so this helps me. Flexibility is a big deal. And it's a big deal in my life because I like to plan everything every day, <laughs> you know, down to the last second. And you can't do it. You can't do it with your children. You can't do it with your grandchildren. But you can show that God can use your flexibility to bring some of your greatest miracles. And being flexible, some of the things that God has put off or to me put off, weren't the right timing for me, have been the biggest miracles in my life. I want you to have this. I think this is very, very important. And I want to say something. I'm just going to break in here for partners. You bless me so much and you bless Sarah so much. That helps us with our flexibility because of your faithfulness. But get the book. Get five or six of them. Pass them on. I think it's very important to give books. And Sarah will tell you, I love books. I'm always passing them on. And Sarah, you've given me some books recently that are just out of this world. One of them I'm reading again and again. And I think this is one you will use again and again. So get five or six of them. And remember... You don't have to live in fear and worry and anxiety every second of your life. God can make things work together for good. Yes. And that's the good news. That's the good news. <laughs> I like the, 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 the scripture that says, all the days ordained for me were written in his book before one of oh. them came to be. And I'll say, God, you knew this day was coming. Exactly. You knew this day was coming. Exactly. And everything's working together for my good. You need to say that out loud. I have to say that out loud a lot. I know. Ah, it's working together for my good. Yeah. It's working. It's working together for my good. And I know it. the scripture doesn't just say it works. It says, and we know. And you just got to settle in your heart. No matter what's going down, it's working together for my good. Because he loves you. Because he loves me. In and fact, there's a purpose wild in over it. You. He's just wild <laughs> over you. Yes. And I say that to him every morning. Yes. I say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved Marilyn. <laughs> and let me say, you should say it too. Now I'm saying it at night too. Why? You say, you, you are so arrogant. No, I'm not. The Bible calls us beloved in New Testament over 42 times. Wow. Are, is that enough to settle you? So you can say good afternoon or good evening or good morning. <laughs> Father, here is your beloved talking to you again. Do you long for peace of mind? Do you struggle with worry and anxiety? Unfortunately, anxiety provoking circumstances are a natural consequence of life but there are effective ways to deal with the stress they cause. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Deborah Pigay's book, 30 Days to Taming Worry and Anxiety. You'll discover how to experience joy by embracing a divine perspective, achieve clarity by improving your sleep, diet, and exercise routines, trade your stress speak for more calming expressions, and much more. Packed with practical insights and biblical inspiration, 
This book helps you respond effectively to worry and anxiety so you can be a happier person. We'll also send you Marilyn's Winning Over Worry CD. In this life-changing teaching, Marilyn tackles this very common topic. You'll find encouragement that God doesn't want you just getting by. He wants you free and winning over the worry in your life. Take the first step in winning your battle over worry. Call or click for this valuable resource. It's just a real honor, Deborah, to have you with us today with our audience. And I'd like, as we finish here, uh, I'd like for you to pray for our audience because there's lots of people who struggle with worry and anxiety. And I know that would be a super essential prayer. So would yes. you pray for everyone? Yes. There remains a rest for the people of God. Mm. Let's enter into it right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are the Prince of Peace. You've come to give us rest. We cast all our care upon you because you care for us. Help us, God, to trust you and not to try to figure out the solution to all of our problems. Cause us, Lord, to run to you. You are our refuge and our fortress. You are our strong tower. And because of that, we can say we rest in you and we will allow your peace to rule in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. How important this is to let the peace of God into your heart. And, you know, sometimes we say, well, how can I do that? Well, t ask him. Say, you told me to have peace, and so give me your peace. And you said it's a gift, you know, that you give it to us. And so take the gift of peace that is for you today. You say, well, you don't know all the things, and I'm, my body's in pain, and my husband's leaving me and my children are a mess. I don't care what they are. The peace of Jesus says that you are trusting in him to do what you could never do. So this is really important today that we trust in his peace no matter what we are facing. He's bigger than the situation. He's bigger than the circumstance. And I find this after all these years, he always causes me to win. The game is not over till you win. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We are so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience. And when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.